My brothers and sisters, Allah says in Surah An-Nur, in order to achieve mercy, you should establish your prayer. You should give from what Allah has given you. Aqimu salata wa atu zakah, and you should follow the messenger. And if you do these three things, you will achieve the mercy of Allah. If we analyze these three things, it's quite simple. The first one is dedicated to your relationship with Allah. The second one is dedicated both to your relationship with Allah, as well as your relationship with the other human beings whom you're going to be charitable towards. Atu zakah. And the third one, to follow the messenger, to follow the entire lifestyle, your own lifestyle. If you are to ensure that all this is in order, Allah says, you will have rahmah, you will have mercy. Listen to this beautiful verse, verse number 56 of Surah An-Nur. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And establish your prayer and give charities and follow the messenger in order that you achieve mercy. And you and I know that contentment is indeed part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness and contentment. We move on to Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan is an amazing surah. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of many factors. The ability and the uh, capacity to distinguish between right and wrong. The Quran is called the criterion. It tells us what's right and what's wrong. And at the same time, when we're in good company and when we're trying to obey Allah and Allah's instructions, we will definitely be able to distinguish between right and wrong, good and bad, and so on. So my brothers, my sisters, listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of having good company and companionship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the regret of those who don't have good company in this world. وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Allah says on that day, the oppressor or the wrongdoer will actually be eating his hands. Why didn't I choose the path of the messenger? Why did I have such and such a person as a friend of mine? He actually led me astray. He took me away from the path of the messenger. And subhanAllah, there will be lots and lots of regret on that day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed the devil is an outright enemy. You need to know that sometimes the devil uses people who are close to you to deviate you. Watch who your friends are. They will determine your level of contentment. That was verse number 27 and 28 of Surah Al-Furqan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed guiding us in such a beautiful way. My brothers and sisters, your circle of friends makes you or breaks you. It's up to you to decide what you'd like. Make sure you have friends who are better in values and morals than you in their relationship with their maker than you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And if you are a person whom others look up to and they are honored to have you as a friend, make sure that you are having a good impact upon them and they are not having a bad impact upon you. In this way, you will be able to achieve contentment. I want to move on to verses within Surah Al-Furqan that still speak about good people. Who are the blessed? Who are the worshippers of the Most Merciful? In Surah Al-Furqan, Allah speaks about them. Allah starts off verse number 63, right up to the end of the Surah, by saying, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا and indeed, the worshippers of the Most Merciful are those who walk on earth with humility. The first quality that Allah makes mention of, those who walk with a calmness, with a contentment, with humility, with happiness, with joy, without haughtiness or pride, they are the worshippers of the Most Merciful. If you worship Allah, you are focused upon the pleasure of Allah, then the material items of this world mean nothing to you. You have them, alhamdulillah. You don't have them, still alhamdulillah. That is Allah. So Allah speaks about 
the second quality. He says, when the ignorant address them, they just say peace and they continue. They don't hit them, they don't abuse them, they don't hurl uh, any bad words at them. They're just peace and they walk away. I greet you and I'm gone. Why? I don't want to engage in something futile with you or something harmful. You're a person who perhaps may not be having the values and the morals that I stand for. Peace. Goodbye. I will pray for you, but I'm not going to waste my time unless I can help you. If I can help you, then I will sit with you and try and help you. That is a higher level, the level of da'wah, the level of calling people towards goodness. But it's not everyone's cup of tea because we know that calling people towards Allah is a duty. But the type of people you call out to, or you call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differs depending on your ability and capacity and what Allah has given you. So remember that. Sometimes you just have to walk away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Then Allah says they spend their nights in prayer. How many of us spend our nights in prayer? It's important for us to do this. How many of us even fulfill the night prayer of Isha and Fajr? let alone that which is voluntary, such as tahajjud and the nafila. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Allah says, the good ones are those who pray to Allah. They call out to Allah, O oh Allah, protect us, divert from us the punishment of hellfire. They are those whom when they spend, they know how to spend. They are not miserly and they don't engage in extravagance, but rather they choose a middle path. They are those who do not call out to any deities besides Allah, who do not call out to anyone or anything besides Allah. And they are the ones who do not commit murder, subhanAllah. They do not commit murder and adultery. And if they were to commit that adultery, they turn back to Allah. They seek the forgiveness of Allah wherever they have sinned. Remember, committing murder is something that is heinous. It is unforgivable, unacceptable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. That which is in association of partnership with Allah in worship is the only sin that if a person were to die without seeking the forgiveness of, they would not achieve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says anything else we will forgive you for. But when it comes to murder, you need the forgiveness of the one you've murdered. Subhanallah, how are you going to achieve that? Well, we're going to have to take the battle to the hereafter. And this is why we say here in this world, no one can guarantee you that you've been forgiven for that particular murder until the person you've murdered forgives you. But Allah gives you hope. Keep on doing good. Keep on trying. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the good ones are those. The worshippers of the most merciful are those who don't bear false witness. We spoke about that. Don't bear false witness. People accuse others. They deceive them. They cheat them. They even take them to court and lie about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. How do you want contentment when you are lying, deceiving? How do you want happiness when you have accused people falsely? When you have jailed people falsely? How? What type of faith do you have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, really grant us ease and success. I mean, then a very important quality that Allah makes mention of. He says, they are those, the worshippers of the most merciful are those whom when they are reminded of the verses of Allah, they don't feel bad. They don't turn a blind eye and they don't turn a deaf ear. They actually listen and look and they take heed. They are happy that someone corrected them. How many of us are happy when others correct us? How many of us are happy when our own parents correct us? Or how many parents would be happy when their children correct them, remind them of Allah? Many people become angry. They become very angry. If you say, my brother, please, let's go to the masjid. You know, prayer is very important. They say, keep quiet, worry about yourself. Go and do your own thing. Why are you talking to me? Those type of answers will not bring about contentment. At least you say, Jazakallah khair, thank you for the reminder. If you are happy at this reminder, you will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these honorable people are the ones who call out to Allah regarding their children. Oh Allah, bless me, grant me with offspring who will be the coolness of my eyes. Oh Allah, make me from among the leaders of the righteous. Grant me goodness, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Listen to this last verse. 
وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Allah says, they are the ones who call out to Allah, O oh Allah, bestow upon us from our wives, from our children, those who will be the coolness of our eyes and make us leaders of the righteous. When you have all these qualities in you, not only will you achieve the contentment of this world, but Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا Allah says they are the ones who will be granted Al-Ghurfa in paradise. Al-Ghurfa is a special abode in Jannah, not just any ordinary place, but a place for those who were the worshippers of the most merciful. They always concentrated on the mercy of Allah. That's why they are called Ibadur Rahman, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all contentment and happiness. This is a beautiful surah, Surat Al-Furqan. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these verses to remind us. I ask you my brothers and sisters to pick up the Quran today and to look at the last verses of Surat Al-Furqan starting from verse number 63 and ask yourself, do I have these qualities in me? If not, please do something to instill and bring about those qualities within you. And if you do have these qualities, work to improve them. You will definitely be a very, very content person and you will be even more content on the Day of Judgment. My beloved brothers and sisters, if you really want to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then be humble, don't be arrogant, don't be too proud of yourself and spend on other if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you sustenance gives you provision if allah gives you extra money then use it for others reach out to others and remember charity does not decrease wealth it will increase allah will give you back in many folds and have good friends the friends that will Remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be that friend to others who reminds about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who reminds about salah, who reminds about zakah, who reminds about all the good deeds to do. Because in this 21st century, if you want to gift yourself something, then gift good friends because it will break you or it will make you. So always try to have some good friends around you. And when the ignorant people, they address you, they try to diminish your honor or respect or they want to quarrel with you, they want to argue with you, leave them by saying salam, by saying peace. Then you will have peace in your life. And always pray to Allah, pray your five daily salah regularly, give charity and do good deeds and pray the salah on time and pray nawafil prayers, pray the tahajjud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower mercy and blessings in your life. And remember, never harm others. Don't hurt others by your hand or by your tongue. The true Muslims, the good Muslims are those who doesn't hurt others with their hands and tongue. The other Muslims are safe from them. So be a Muslim like that and build your character and conduct. Then you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower Mercy will shower blessings in your life.